So Tyrant Tales Spring Edition, my name is Nimsh, I'm here with Lothar, and Moody is joining us on the couch. Hello guys, hello. How are you doing, man? Uh, right now I'm doing really good. I hope I will do the same tomorrow. Alright, and just watching the next match, because uh, the winner of the next match is going to be your opponent. Yes, I'm gonna study him. So you can actually g give your input here on what the style of your opponent will be, right? Because yes. then you can adjust your own style against your opponent. So it's kind of, kind of valuable to have you here right now to see and to hear uh, what w what will be your thought process about your opponent. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to to watch them really closely. All right, and um, talking about your opponents, uh, Lothar, who's playing next? Uh, it, we have Tessin and you need we. Need, um, Actually played on against you need in the Millennium Cup, right? Is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. You need um, is a uh, is a player that I faced a couple of times before, mm -hmm. and uh, he was uh, from the beginning of Hearthstone. He was one of the top French players, I believe, from from Gamers Origin. Uh, t play testing with the Fisho a lot and with the rest of the guys from uh, from the team. He They're kind of close, right? They're yeah, all close. yeah, yeah. They they, they do do test a lot, and uh, at o overall the French community is really close, and uh, they they mostly exchange. Um, they don't. They don't. Come, they don't come out out of the French, I think, community that much. Like they're mostly known in France. And even if that, I, I was in France a couple of times. Um, they are like local celebrities. They have a lot of respect from mm -hmm. uh, all the viewers. And um, like for example, the, the French casters. They are also really revered by the French community. And not that many people know them outside of the community. But, but that's very similar to other games as well, because you can you can see the same situation in CS:GO, an example where the French scene is kind of like. Locked in a lockdown yeah. in the French community, but it's very well um, like developed inside the country. So it's not developed outside the country to the to the bigger the bigger audience, but in, uh, inside the, li the smaller circle, it's really well developed. Absolutely. And then there's Tessin. Uh, Moody, have you uh, talked to him? Uh, I actually uh, met Tessin right here. I didn't know about him. He seems like a friendly guy, but I I have no clue what he plays, what he what is his playstyle. So, I'm 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 about to see. All right, I, I know that Tessin was actually discussing a lot of uh, matchups and uh, approach to the game with Crane before, and he was mm -hmm. pretty happy with the matchups because the players, as usual, could change their decks. But we actually sat down with the players and asked them some questions. So let's see what they have to say for themselves. Hello, I am Yunid. I am 23 years old. I come from France. Um, I've been playing Hearthstone since the beginning. I'm a professional gamer and a streamer for Gamers Origin. My name is Tessin. I'm 20 years old from Denmark. I play for the team Trick Esports. The, the PGL qualifiers was a, a lot of cash prize, a lot of good players. Uh, it was Last year it was the DreamHack Bucharest, so it has a, a good name to it. And I just wanted to try to qualify to, I don't know, travel and try to do my best. I practice that a lot with my partner Dark Shadows and then I spoke with uh, Navi Hoy about the setup and how we should do it. So I believe it's working out so far. So let's see if I can win tomorrow. Uh, I think the best player in the tournament, the best players are maybe Ty, Crane and maybe Vince, who is a, a up and coming new Aston uh, French player. He's really good, so yeah, maybe Thais, Crane and Vince. Yeah, I'm f totally familiar with Crane since we are from the same country. We played to against each other before, and then Gara also from Tempo Storm. But um, I believe Thais got a big chance of winning. He's for sure a really good player, and he's the only one with 5-0. So I'm looking forward to play against him. Today I went 3-2. Uh, and two. Um, I think I, I, I did a lot of misplays, and I didn't bring a good lineup. Uh, I think I got lucky. Uh, for example, against Powder, who is a very good player, I went 3 0 with a Flame Waker Mage deck, which is really bad. Uh, I think tomorrow I will bring a better comp. Mm, so far, I just like to compete about against the best players in the world, and it's going good so far, and my friends are doing good as well. So. I really like the honesty and you need saying, I, I got lucky, I didn't play well, but for today I'm ready, I'll bring a good lineup. Great. Yeah, now I'll take it serious. <laughs> <It's like laughs> well, he okay. did take it serious, but uh, I, uh, probably he faced something that he didn't expect uh, fully, right? Probably. Well, you know, that can happen when you just predict the metagame 
in a bad direction, right? And then you're caught off guard, and you're like, oh god, I should prepared more for this tournament. Uh, but he has redemption, right? The, the chance of redemption because now they can change the whole lineup, and that can uh, that will be also the case for tomorrow. So they are aware that they're bringing this lineup, probably only for today. Right. And uh, Moody, what do you think about Tessin? He has uh, some powerful friends. He was uh, talking with Hoy. He was preparing with Crane as well. Uh, do you think he has a better chance to uh, to win than you need? Uh, I'm not sure about um, their playstyle, but based on their lineup, uh, I think I need Priest can uh, can trio uh, Tessin. All right. Oh so really? the Priest, the Priest is the deck that can actually free out this lineup. Yes. Uh, if the Warlock from Tessin is Zoo. If it's Reno Lock, we, we saw... How it usually ends. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it all depends also how the Priest is being built. Right? There's a lot of things you can tweak in the deck. Some Priests don't even use Flash Heal, an example. So the, and this card might push it to the limits when it comes against Reno or Jackson Warlock because it might call the off guard the Reno Jackson, right? Because he's he might be just dead by yeah. two kill commands for two mana, yeah. an example, right? Absolutely. All right, guys. Game number one is starting, and uh, you need, in fact, starts with that priest deck uh, oh that God. you mentioned, Moody. But this start from Tassin is quite explosive. Well, He's this is like double secret keeper is something that you would usually love to see when you have at least one secret. So he hopes for a top deck next step, right? Yes. He needs that one secret. But mini bot isn't that bad either. So if he doesn't top deck, he still has. Have Avenge? Well, there was like 1 to 7 chances to have a secret, 1 to 8, depends on how many secrets does he play, but um, this looks awesome. I would definitely go for the Secret Keeper and, and Avenge this turn. Yes, me too. Okay, I would not disagree with you guys here. Uh, by the way, the one thing that you need mentioned, he said that Vince can be one of the best players in the tournament. We haven't seen him on stream yet, I believe, but he is in the top 16. He will play later today, so I, I got suddenly really excited to see that match as well. Well, we have four matches, not counting this one, um, for, the later, uh, for, for the second part of the day, right? So yeah. Still a lot of matches. All right. So at least Star Seeker, is it uh, an auto includence kind of priest uh, at the moment, Moody? Uh, I think it is because uh, basically Priest now is made to with uh, heavy removals like Ocean Eye Circle, uh, Entomb, um, what is it called the, the Light Bomb, Light Bomb, yes, yeah. and then you throw uh, Elise for the late game to beat to win against Control Warrior. And okay, and it's uh, always uh, good stats as well for mana three five. It's yes. not bad when you play it. Uh, Excavated Evil, wow, that's really good against Paladins. So you think this matchup is uh, in favor of Priest overall? I would say it's like 55, almost 60 for, uh, for Priest. Okay. Just because they have a lot of, uh, like, they have very uh, much removal and they can entomb um, Tyrion. Mm. And it's, it, Paladin must, must pressure uh, Priest really, really from the beginning. But it seems that uh, the Tessin already succeeded with that. Yeah, he is pressuring, but on the other hand, we have this uh, coin excavated evil that can't just clear the board because uh, Tessin didn't get a secret. That's actually a huge deal, because now the excavated evil will not trigger the Avenge, so the board gets kind of reset, and ho like, hopefully with Tessin there's an easy way to fill the board, and there is, because there's a masterful battle and hero power, and I guess that's better than the low tab in this situation because your opponent played a secret of a coin so he would like to develop minions on board right now and having more minions after your opponent plays an AoE is better against for the uh, mysterious what challenger is. avenge and redemption and noble sacrifice next turn right yes i agree all right i wonder if uh, unit is having some um Interesting cards in his deck. So Excavated Evil, is it a standard in this kind of Priest or is it uh, more of a French deck? Mm, I think it's uh, more of a French deck. I, I haven't seen many Priests with uh, with this card. All right. That's that's really cool because like we've mentioned that uh, the French community is really closed and they, they mostly talk against uh, within each other. But um, like overall, my experience from WoW TCG and Magic is that uh, the French community just brings new decks because they think um, as a one, one big organism and they feel like some decks are better than others. And I, I also feel like 
from that experience that they are more control oriented overall as players. You guys have the same impression? That no, I have no idea. I just I, I will agree with you. Okay. I, <laughs> I didn't play any other card game. And in Hearthstone, would you say that French players are mostly ag aggro oriented or control oriented? Mm, I would say control oriented. Yeah, that's that, that's actually true. Like, but it, you can say about it, uh, like when you compare the meta game in other card games too, between North America and Europe, usually North America is like swimming in aggro decks. Yeah. When Europe is like, yeah, we are the elite players. We are playing control decks. We don't care about Let aggro. It, it's kind of like a very narrow-minded. Um, narrow-minded thing, uh, thing to, to say about players in general uh, when Europeans usually trash talk <laughs> aggro players, right? Because p pilot and aggro decks also require skill. It's just a different type of, of um, a different type of game for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I do agree with you that Europe is more defensive in uh, with regards to trying to have answers in decks to specific situations so like europe will be more uh, tempted to play big game hunter for example where uh, in us the decks sometimes just lack big game hunter and and the players accept the fact that uh, well if i cannot answer it i cannot answer it my strategy is to, to basically kill you as fast as possible yes but uh, something interesting i um, i observed like these uh, regionals i i think that europeans brought um, more aggressive decks than the americans True. So maybe it's not uh, exactly true for Hearthstone. But uh, did you remember the first regionals, like that the one that lasted till 6 a.m. Because all the European players brought all only control decks. Yeah, I, I do remember that. I want to forget Lothar. Why are you keep reminding me? <laughs> because it was an <laughs> interesting situation when every single player from the pools of 16 brought only control decks, and every single match was free to, and every single game did last for at least 30 minutes. I do remember that uh, Priest vs. Shaman game that the players just he were hero-powering till uh, I lost consciousness. Okay, this situation though is uh, still pretty good for the Priest. Uh, Paladin lost the Mistress Challenger on two secrets and can stop some attacks with Lothar, but uh, slowly running out of cards. And there's the Belgian Jossica, which I love in this situation. Both of them are really nice just to play on board, on the board, that's it. But the draw of the Nosha Claire will also change some stuff, because now the Ellie Sarsica is a good drop also, right? You get a card from the uh, from the Pyromancer, you get a drop of 3-5 minion and to draw a card. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he can also go for uh, for Jessica Trueheart. It's not like this Lothab is going to do much Welcome overall. Even if it goes for face, you, you have those heals. I, I would say that uh, from this point the priest will, will just add value Paladin and will answer every threat until the priest just uh, just can't lose anymore. Wasn't it better to play the... If you were planning on playing the Jassikar, I would have probably played it first for the Repentance. Because then your opponent would have to finish it off with the weapon, right? Most likely. Well, it does counter Lothab on board. So basically, having it as six but free. But you have, like, you're playing the priest that has a ridiculous amount of answers to a minions. So you're not, you, you don't want exactly to just be trading with each other because you have light bomb. You, you know, like if you're in such a great position overall uh, this game that if at least can kill Lothar, that's pretty good for you. Hmm. But yeah, like uh, in this situation, you can actually expect. Uh, Noble Sacrifice. What, what was the secret? Noble Sacrifice? It's Noble Sacrifice? Yes, uh, okay. yes, it's Noble. So we see the second Excavated Evil. So that means uh, I need Tekt against probably Paladin and Zulox. And so Most far, likely. Yeah, and so far uh, it seems that uh, it's working. And he wasn't playing Priest before. Um, I think he didn't have a Priest in the lineup. I, I overheard Tessin talking to Crane about uh, overall lineup from Unit, and he was happy that Unit did take Priest because he felt like he's now in a good spot overall, but uh, Crane did uh, tell him that Priest might be your problem, and I agree with Moody here that Priest is the deck to beat, so Unit can actually free off with Priest. It all depends if the matchup against Druid, because the Light Bombs against Druid might be kinda too slow. Yes, and uh, I saw Harrison also in Priest. Light Bombs are not uh, that good against Druid. The same goes for the Excavated yeah, Evil, Exactly, right? so 
basically I need tech so hard to beat uh, Paladin and Zulox and but I don't think uh, his matchup against Druid will be that good anymore. So uh, if the I have to will be ta taken right now. Yeah, if I if match. I have to guess after this match uh, Tessin will mm. take Druid and probably will have uh, the upper hand. Okay. But then like we have Warlock and Warrior for unit, so this is uh, this will be interesting what he will play and if he changed anything else uh, because he was playing mage before now he's playing priest maybe he changed like he kept the classes but he changed the decks oh i don't like that i will just play one of the weapons and hit face how, how do you want to win the weapons will not get you with the value that you need and your deck is filled with two excavation and evil so your weapons probably won't Will be not won't be targeting any kind of creature at all but do you do anything with those weapons if there is four if there is this heal anyway. But you need to build some form of board control and pressure at the same time. So those weapons, you have five turns of weapon swinging. And the game, if it will last five more turns, there's no way you're gonna win. But then the Coke Hammer can actually, like I would, li I would like to have a bigger minion on board to play Coke Hammer, like something like a Belcher at least. Then you go for the Trucible tru tru Champion. And just deal four to face. Yeah. And he heals. And that's another weapon. Yeah. I would say that uh, Tessin, Tessin wants right now to uh, give maximum value to the weapons and kill, uh, like, to gain board control. Yeah. I think uh, his plan is never swing face, but he doesn't know he's playing against Ellie Starseeker. Exactly. And uh, if you're playing against Ellie Starseeker as um, a secret paladin, you won't win late game. So from his point of view, uh, this might be correct, but... Uh, we, we are seeing both hands, and probably uh, swinging face was the, the, the correct play. Yeah, yeah, exactly, knowing what, uh, what's going on. I don't think the uh, Elise has such a big impact here, because even a single Cabal Shadow Priest in Tomb, or um, in Tomb practically, will swing the, 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 the end game in the Priest's favor. Yeah, that's true. And to onto Tyrion is such a nasty play. If yep. it happens, I'm not sure I would play Tyrion just because I I would be scared of of Entomb. So so you would try to bait out double Entomb before yes. you play Tyrion. <laughs> maybe <laughs> on they the will. One yeah, maybe <laughs> they will Entomb the one once. He casts Entomb for fun because it's such a great position. For justice. Oh man, excavated evil! Like giving Paladin excavated evil also like is uh, quite funny. It's mess up. It mess. It does mess up their draws, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually true. What do you do? <laughs> Evil? Well, he actually found a, a way to use it, but, but uh, it's and it's going back to priest. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now yeah. the priest has another AOE sweeper. True. Oh man, I really like this match. We see cards like Excavated Evil, which is not uh, well often seen, and at least our seeker. I, I'm super happy that she actually made it because Sir Finley Murgleton has a place in Shaman, an Agri Shaman, and it works. Then Bran Bronzebeard is being heavily played. Reno Jackson is heavily played. And at least it's like this fourth explorer that's not explored enough, let's say. So I'm oh really wow. happy that it's actually now. <laughs> Did I really say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One damage to the face. Look at that. Priest is actually at 25. He's almost at the starting level. I, I would say Tessin's plan right now is to get as much information as he can uh, to, like, to get information what uh, what uh, this piece contains, mm -hmm. so I think uh, in his mind he he's, he he gives up. Lost, yeah, lost, he gives yeah. up. But he wants to see like precious information, like like the second light bomb, like uh, I don't know which cards, uh, like who knows. Yeah, he did see at least our secret. That's some knowledge. He did see double excavated evil. Hmm. Well, don't he even have a way to kill the? The abomination, unless you will use the keeper of Uldoman on it, or on the mm, your own minion. I think it's better to use it on. Yeah, because you get less damage. Man. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it, you still get five, but doesn't matter. Mm. Doesn't matter that much. So yeah, just trying to prolong the game. But um, the good news for Tessin is that there is only three cards in the priest's None hand. So oh no! Oh. It's alright. It's very fun. You know, there is no end to for now. So maybe if Tessin actually gets um, Dr. Boom. Oh, there is an end to. Alright. The game is not over yet. 
And uh, whatever Tessin does, he's still uh, okay in a way that he's getting that information, even though he looks really bad on board. I will just clean the, uh, clean up the board or just go face. He, he wants to give Tessin another excavator table. Yeah. That's a nice uh, gift from Unid. And I just noticed that Unid is actually uh, watching Tessin. And this is one of the advantages because those players uh, sit face to face, so you can watch your opponent and see how is he behaving, is he really in a bad mindset. And Destin is mostly looking at the game and shaking his head, so maybe he didn't give up yet. Like, he's still in the mindset, like, I'm, I'm losing, I'm gonna lose this. The second Musing Curator, that's also precious information. Because when you play double Musing Curators, you almost always play Valence Chosen as well, because it's a great minion just to have that t turn 2 drop into a Valence Chosen, right? Yeah, yeah. Did. Oh. That's a good draw, but unfortunately... You can't play it. Yeah. I wonder what's the value of um, mental exhaustion. Like, from Unit's perspective, you do trap your opponent in this, this match he can't win, but he still hopes he can win. So he will try to really think super hard how to win this unwinnable match, and after that he will, he will start making mistakes, because he will not have enough stamina, mental stamina, to continue. And we'll just do mistake, like even make more mistakes. Yeah, he will get exhausted, and maybe the because of that he will make mistakes in the other series. Exactly, even the ones he's actually favored to win. Yeah. Harrison Jones shows up late to the party. <laughs> it's like most of the weapons were. Yeah, most used. of the weapons were uh, are gone, and then <laughs> Harrison Jones like, "Yo, hello, bros. Let are there any weapons off. left? Back to full health." Actually, that's really interesting. Uh, not, not trying not to, to play light bomb or in tomb. In tomb. Right? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised too. Like, you don't have to, right? The thing is now um, you can trade into Sylvanas and try not to take boom. Like for example, hero power trade with the boom bot, trade with the creeper, and then we have I think one out of four or five to to take the boom. So yeah, he will do that. Uh, yeah. Maybe he's doing it specifically to like open uh, Hunter Creeper. Yeah, exactly. To have more chances, not to not to take boom. So and it'll uh. pause it won't work. Uh. <laughs> and Tessin is just <laughs> devastated. <laughs> it's like and I did one damage to the face. I did so much. I, did I mean, so we much. all know that didn't really matter. Yeah, that didn't really matter. Yeah. Well, Tessin might not know that. He is uh, still hoping. Oh, we didn't attack first. Ah, uh, if bad minion would have taunt. The thing is, if if I uh, was testing right now, I would be glad that bad RNG goes to this game and not to <laughs> the others. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. Probably, statistically, you should have some luck in the next RNG outcomes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I like the sportsmanship from Tessin, though. Uh, he is really emotional and... Uh, Right now, I think that was actually needed uh, for him because he was in a really bad spot mentally, just shaking his head and then just uh, punishing himself when he was playing versus the priest. But after that, Sylvanas sta stealing Dr. Boom, he just was like, okay, this is it. He, he basically reached the bottom and bounced off it. He was like, okay, Hopefully. that was a fun game. Let's let's have another one. Well, in the interview, he said that he wants to have fun here, right? Like he's he's here to, ha to play against the best players in the board and uh, just compete, have some fun, get the experience. And that's about it. So hopefully he will get what he what he wants. How many excavated evil did we did we see? Uh, like eight hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I think we saw four at least uh, because there were there were two from the priest and there was one from the paladin and there was one more from the priest. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, unfortunately against the druid they should not matter that much. Yeah. Uh, the free damage. <laughs> they kill shade of Extravus. <laughs> After one turn, sure. Uh, but. Uh, well, it actually matters with Valence Chosen, because then it's four damage, so it can clear Azure Drakes, and that's about it. I'm not sure Rani expects to win against um, the Druid. Yes, but it's a really, it's a really huge advantage that you that he won the first game. So I think his plan was just take the first win and yeah. then go from there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he can still win versus Druid. It's not like it's an unwinnable matchup. I, I, I do agree with you guys fully. Druid has an advantage, mm -hmm. especially if it has a good start. Like, Priest will just be 
Like, there will be no tools to come back uh, just to fight versus those four attack minions, even like f two attack minions. But if Druid actually doesn't have a great start, and Priest has a good one instead, maybe Northshire Cleric into that Curator into the Valence Jones that we haven't seen but we uh, suspect is in the deck, mm -hmm. um, then Druid will have trouble. Well, the Museum Curator is one of the most important cards uh, in the Priest deck right now against the Druid because it can give you Palter Shutters, it can give you Belchers, and can give you... Dark Cultists, uh, even? Yeah, Dark Cultists. Like, every single of those creatures will be very helpful against um, Druid in general because, as we know, Druid needs to hard cast damage to deal with creatures. They have no removal, there is no Entomb, there is no, no easy way of dealing with five damage than minion unless yeah. you use Swipe in a hero power or something like that. It's actually... S I, I'm quite surprised. I'm, I'm, I'm actually really surprised. Uh, maybe... We spent like five minutes talking about yes. Druid and now it's... Zoo. Maybe he has Agro Druid? I think so. Mm, I don't but know. But it w would be better anyway. Uh, right. Probably it would be better, yeah. Because you don't care about the excavated evil, it's too slow. Yes. It kills two of your creatures, maybe one. I'm even more surprised because Zoo is actually a bad matchup. Like, a Priest is a bad matchup for the Zoo, es especially with this kind of and start. Look, look, there's the Valence Chosen. There's the Zombie Chow Curator into Valence Chosen. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Maybe he has Egg Druid? <laughs> egg Druid, Moody. Okay, Egg Druid is great against Excavated Evil. <laughs> mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I think the the problem here might be that uh, he was really talking to Crane about it, and Crane said I I didn't hear what Crane said, but Crane said that Priest can have a good matchup versus your Druid. Not this one, though. Not this, yeah, one. Not this one. But he might still be in the mindset that I talked to Crane. Crane told me Druid is bad. I will pick my other deck. Well, usually the um, usually the Priest is great against Druid if it if it plays own big minions. So. It's Dragon Priest, an example, that's like the best Priest against Druids in general because they're playing the same game as Druid is playing, but they're better at the minions, uh, at their own minions, right? Yeah. That's about it. By the way, I'm kind of surprised that he played the Poward Shield hmm. instead oh. of the Curator or just Shadow would paint that. Well, you can play Curator at any moment, right? Like, you can even go for Valiant's Chosen next, day, uh, next turn and then uh, yeah. coin out the Belcher after that. So uh, zombie chow, like a big zombie chow, is mostly a problem for uh, for the zoo deck unless you have an Iron Bigao. But then, like you want your opponent to silence zombie chow overall. I mean, just I before the draw, I just wanted to point out that the port shield is great for your pyromancers, and he just drew one. I think as a priest, you can be a little bit greedy and try oh. to shed the word pain the imgang boss, because maybe that's the best value on. Uh, like in the zoo minions to shadow or paint the uh, in-game boss. So maybe he he expects um, uh, in-game boss and then sh um, shadow or paint gets uh, really good. Yeah, that's right. But uh, right now, after that implosion for two, like he really needed to hit it for at least three to be able to kill this big zombie chow because uh, unit is just going to slay the minions and heal the zombie chow. How? Even with a do uh, if, even with a good implosion, you're still losing the board to a pyromancer, and it doesn't look good anyway. True. I mean, this is like the, the most horrid scenario yeah. for the zoo player, but judging by the way how uh, you need build the priest and how it's so how it's going like impossible. further into the game in the future, like it's a belcher, it's a shadow of pain and cure to the same turn, it looks horrible for the, the zoo. This is actually my worst nightmare. I I. Like, I would, if I am O2 and I have Zoo against Priest, no, just, uh, Look at that. I, I'll consider Heal the Pyromancer, Shadow would paint the 2-4, and you clear everything. Yeah, and you still have your uh, amazing board. Uh, the thing was, like, if there would be no Pyromancer, then uh, he had a chance with a good implosion into maybe Gormok, deal for damage, start taking back the board, and even have the Sea Giant after that. But the reality of Tessin at the moment is that he has a dead Sea Giant in hand. Gormok that doesn't do much, it's just a 4-4 four, four stats. And, um, well, some small minions, but uh, this board, on the other hand, from Unid, is still really threatening. And the long game actually favors you need. Yeah. He will be he will get more removal cards. And priest hero power when you have board control is like really really good. 
Alright, so the slaughter continues. Um, what will be the best play here? Welcome to the observatory. Welcome to the observatory. Oh, that was the God Dark Cultists we talked about. Palted Sky Golem is also awesome, but kind of the slow against the Druids. Uh, sorry, ag against the Zoo. It would be awesome against the Druids, though. Yeah, yeah. So... Wobbling runs! Cultists? I yes, actually like that card, Take yeah. the runs! <laughs> yeah, we see the runs! <laughs> oh, man. I love this card. This card is great. Uh, we had a similar card in WoW TCG as well. Um, with, like, a Pyramid. When it, when you kill it, it uh, just falls, um, creates free, free dudes. It was a bit better because th they actually had uh, powers. Uh, those guys, th they do not have powers, but they have pretty cool overall. But they don't. They doesn't. They don't have the same name. Yeah, yeah. There are like three different dudes. Three different dudes. Yeah. And they are pretty good versus Zoo because they they have like it's kind of like a delayed force of nature. Yeah. So it's really good to have creatures who to attack. The thing is, if uh, if priest plays uh, that card. Uh, as a zoo, you don't want to kill it because if you when you kill it, it's actually put. It, it's more pressure yeah. than um, leaving it, uh, leaving leaving it alone. And they have like being a two six, they can kill a lot of things before they yeah. die. And so you just good. heal heal the. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh man, just wow. hero power pass. <laughs> like, what are you expecting to do even? Just play a lot of small minions and Gormok something. I would favor just the Harrison Jones here. Well, you don't have the Alkenai yet, so you can't really rely on a burst. Right in, now. in theory, a true heart puts more pressure on board. One more attack. Okay, yeah, that's true. Actually the one more <laughs> attack might actually matter. Actually, Tessin doesn't know about uh, Harrison, right? Oh, yeah, right. So maybe Good he point. just want because he's, he's ahead, he yeah. just want to n not to show Harrison. Yeah, yeah I true. mean, it doesn't really matter because your opponent well, it can ha he can have Jaraxxus, but it's more unlikely. But the Druid will have no weapons at all. What is he expecting to draw? Was there an Excavated Evil being cast before? Not really. No. Tessin, Excavated Evil does not stay in your deck. You have to play cards, man. So, next turn he will be able to play some small minions. Alright. But it's still... Um, He's done in bad shape overall. So now we can have some good trades. It's slow and steady. Yeah. Like you need you need had an opportunity to go for face, but now he doesn't have to. Like his uh, absolute aim is still just to kill everything that can be played. Yes, you you can you can outvalue Zoo really really easily from this point. So you just clear the board always and if if you have spare damage you go face and I'm big out for Death Lord. When you think about it, two Death Lords is like a half of a hero power. Yeah. You have to go uh, sorry, half of a hero. So 16 points of L just put on, on the board for six mana and you have to flow through that to get to the zombie chow that will heal your hero. <laughs> Highly <laughs> unlikely yeah. that to, so to, to do that, actually. That was absolutely devastating. And uh, But I do agree with you guys. He did pick Zoo into Priest instead of the Druid. Mm hmm but this means that right now he should have a good matchup. Mm, I, I don't think so because if he if he thought he had a good matchup, I think he would have played druid. So I'm not sure, but he well, thinks we'll have to see. he thinks his druid is worse than Zoo against, against priest, against priest and yeah. this this should be horrible for him. Well, that that'll be hard. If he doesn't get the ramp, uh, then maybe we'll see this uh, similar opening because the druid, if it doesn't have the ramp, it might have trouble dealing with zombie chow with valence chosen as well. Yeah, yo, yo, like the opener with a huge HP minion should be horrible for to to deal with uh, for the druid unless he gets a keeper just to silence the minion. But yeah. then you know, it's still a two three minion if it's a zombie chow. If it's a critter, then one two minion doesn't really matter. But in general. Uh, you always need the ramp in a druid, right? You always need that. Yeah, definitely. You're so mulliganing for the ramp. Exactly. Maybe he plays ram druid and he's afraid of light bombs and esc and um, and tombs. And he thought his zoo deck has, uh, is better than his ram druid. I'm, so I'm not you sure. you are telling me that someone would deliberately put off, like put out a force of nature and savage or an example from his deck. M would he just searching for those druid lists? Like <laughs> <there>? <laughs> Even Ramp plays like one force of nature, two savage draws, or one force of nature, one savage draw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's so powerful. But in, in general, we would have not sacrificed those cards in a druid deck at all in current metagame. 
That's the nodding his, ha his head. It's like, oh, finally a good matchup. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we'll have to see. If he gets the Wild Grove for the turn three pile to shutter. There is a good opening for Uni, though. Uh, turn one Zombie Chow, always nice. Turn two Wild Pyromancer is always good. Is it against a Druid, it's still a body that the Druid needs to deal with. So if he doesn't have the Keeper, uh, it, it, it's basically, when you think about it, when you play Zombie Chow into Pyromancer, it looks like you're playing Zoo. Yeah, it's I, I do agree with you absolutely. It's like a bit different Pyromancer than versus Paladin, because versus Paladin you will need the AoE, but versus Druid you just you are happy with free attack. Yep, exactly. Do you agree, Moody? Yes, um, I think Priest is really consistent because his top uh, like his top curve is at six. Yeah. And uh, he, he, it's like a zoo, like a zoo deck, but with a different purpose. True, true. That's a fair point. And there is a, a good opening as well for Tessin. So he got that Wild Grove, Ooh. but it's probably not a Wild Grove this turn. You just uh, yeah, you, you just pass. Yeah. But his opening hand is awesome. It Two is. Two pilot yes. shredders into an engine of law or Dr. Boom. That's perfect. Scenario. And Unit is lacking turn 3, at the moment at least, but there is going to be a Wild Grove, so he'll be able to push uh, for Yes, two turns, basically. Yeah, he needs something like... Um, Death for the Red uh, Chosen. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what he needed. Well, missed turn 3, that's, uh, that's sad. Ooh. Even Innervate. Dr. Options. Boom right now? Why not? There's no Entomb. Shadow War Death. Would be Shadow War Death. It actually but clears the board, but... Yeah, but then most likely the bombs would clear the minions, or at least one, right? And your opponent is off curve, because he used three mana on the turn four. I would do it. You're you're down 0 to just YOLO. You, yeah, yeah, You, you need to get to win some games with your luck. Especially because you will not really need the Innervate and the coin. Uh, on turn five, you have Belcher if you want to, or one of the Shredders. On turn six, you have Shredder with uh, Hero Power or whatever. So it's not like you really uh, destroy your hand because you threw away uh, Innervate and Coin. Yeah, you still have a good curve. Yeah, and you still have an Ancient of Law to replenish uh, those those cards used to play the Dr. Boom on turn 3. I mean, let's just listen to the sound of this sentence. Should I play Dr. Boom on turn 3? <laughs> it sounds great. Uh, but Tessin is afraid of the Shadow War Death, apparently, so he's not going for it. There was one more advantage for Dr. Boom. Entomb is really far away. Yeah, exactly. If, if you want to play Dr. Boom, I think uh, that was the... Be because if he plays on turn 6, then Priest uh, is drawing more cards and he has enough mana. Yeah. So... So how does Dr. Boom on turn 4 sound like? Uh, well, now he has played... Oh my! You don't need cards right now. You have cards. You have even a Dr. Boom, which is like 3 cards and 1. So... Well, this is something that can happen sometimes when you're uh, with your back to the wall. Uh, people tend to get super secure and defensive, and not playing Dr. Boom uh, just shouts to his face, he has Shadow or Death, I'm afraid of it, I'll not play my Dr. Boom into it. Or even heal with the Ancient of Law. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, that he's, playing, he's playing really, really safe, and I think it's not correct to play safe when you, when you have this hand and you're... Like uh, I I I don't agree with uh, not not playing boom there. We we have to also remember that he was afraid of this matchup to begin with. Like yeah. he felt this is a bad matchup for him. Okay, um, this is still a nice board overall. But uh, what can unit do now? Actually, unit unit hand is is pretty bad with double cabal shadow priest that are use uh, are useless right now. Actually, excavated evil wouldn't be that bad this time. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Interesting. Wild Grove. Well, and now if he plays Doctor Boom because it's ten seven, then it's most likely getting yes, tomb, it's right? It's most likely getting destroyed, and or either in tomb or light bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Both are open now. But it's still not a bad play, especially because um, you can deal with Belcher easily with this board, and then you have Pilot Shredder, which is not contested by the one two. But then, like if you play Doctor Boom, it actually gives Priest another card. Uh, he can attack in with the Acolyte with one of the bombs. I actually, I think I would play Druid of the Claw here because uh, I know his. Uh, I, if I know the Priest hmm. has really situational cards, I don't want to give them value. 
Yeah. So if I play Druid of the Claw, he probably won't Entomb it, and he probably won't, uh, won't, uh, like, Light Bomb. Yeah. So that means his uh, Priest next turn won't, will just Hero Power pass or play something weak. I don't want to give Priest uh, good turns. Yeah, I true. Agree. The Valence Chosen was really good for you, though. Oh, no! my, my goodness! Tessin is the <laughs> unluckiest player in this tournament! He's like, I can't believe this! I got I got Implosion for two before... Uh, like, what was the unlucky thing he got? Uh, like, ev even the first game, there was something. Well, that that was not important because that was like a uh, deductible my steal. Oh, yeah, yeah, with Sylvanas. And now Doomsayer. So he's like, yep, yep, I, I'm destined not to win this match. Well, uh, he probably would have won by playing Dr. Bone Freeze so <laughs> already. Yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but maybe this is, again, the moment where he just collects himself. He's like, okay, this is, uh, this is my situation. This is my life now. I need to move forward, see what's up. And he decides but to draw again. Just for the viewers, don't write on Reddit about how unlucky this player is. Because this is usually how I feel like players are like um, kind of finding an excuse for the RNG, right? I lost this match because of the RNG, but there are so many decisions that you can make during the game to make the outcome different. Yes. And this is, this is how we progress. If you want to be a successful player in Hearthstone, you don't blame the losses on RNG. Even if it's I agree, of course, that sometimes the game when you just lose because there was Let some kind of bad luck. But in most situations, you can rewind the game and find at least two situations where you could have done something different, which could have been better or was strictly better of what you did instead. Yeah, well, what Moody suggested with Druid of the Claw seemed a bit better there, uh, just not giving value. And uh, mm -hmm. like, even if there would not be the Doomsayer. But overall, um, Tessin is not out yet. He still has a lot of good cards in hand. I mean, this is a good matchup for him. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Maybe he will realize it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and stop being afraid. Come on, Tessin. We believe in you. At the least. thing is, having Druid as your last deck isn't that bad. Like, I, I wouldn't feel really bad being 0-2, but still but having Druid. Because yeah. Druid... You can win against mm. everything. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, so. and he was so unlucky that if he managed... If he manages to win this game, he will probably white drop every turn uh, from uh, <laughs> <laughs> next games. And he will also have morale boost because he's like, oh man, I won this impossible to win matchup. So now I want to roll. I can do this. Excessive trading. I don't know how to feel about that. And now as a priest, you don't really have good options. You don't want to light bomb this. You don't want to entomb this. But the excavated evil now was actually good. Yeah. And Priest is still at 29 HP. That's quite a good position to be in because you're not uh, intimidated by the fact that your opponent well, can play Savage Roar and Force of Nature and just... That's true, but you know. uh, this means the game will just uh, go for a couple more turns and when the Druid takes uh, board control, it, it, he will be poised to win because the combo then deals even more damage. Like uh, the moment where there are three minions, uh, the combo oh deals 20 boy. damage by itself plus um, damage from those minions specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are not that many AOE cards uh, for Unit anymore. And he is behind on board. Like he fights, tries to fight back. I actually would, uh, if I were was testing right now, I actually would think um, about stalling the game until you can get Emperor value and double combo. Because it's not That's a very good point. Because Priest is not like Warrior. He can't he can't build up uh, armor. Yeah. He will be at 30 hit points, you swing your Druid of the Claw two times and then you double combo. Is he going to play this Dr. Boom just after you need God Shadow or Death? <laughs> and there's a couple Shadow Priest to take the bomb. <laughs> oh man. It's like it literally he just drew Shadow or Death. Tessin was waiting for this moment specifically. For I'm eight turns. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> if he if he knows. The Pyromancer is not needed there. Yeah, that's a good outcome. That's a perfect outcome. Two seven minion is not something Druid has an easy way to deal with. Yeah. You probably just need to silence it uh, to be able to go for phase. But the then, if you silence it and there's a there's a Valence chosen dropping by, that's a problem. Because you have silenced no again. Oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sounds like a plan. Man. Yeah, but you're right. This a four attack minion is, is troublesome and it's not easy to kill it. Uh, Druid of the Claw swipe. I mean, swipe Druid of the Claw, sorry. Uh, in, the, in that order. Mm -hmm. So you can kill the, um, the Death Lord and. Okay, what? Oh, the Death Lord. Okay. I, well, I, I think too. Druid saw double um, Cabal Shadow Priest, right? So, so he's Was not it the second one? Uh, yes, because Priest had two in hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So he is not afraid anymore to to play um, Keeper of the Grove. True. And we've seen one Valence already. There's still a huge minion on board, and there's no easy way to deal with it unless you want to combo that. Yeah, but this is a priest, so do you really expect um, priest to do a lot of damage? Like, Unit at the moment is running out of resources. He only has two cards, he has one draw card, but uh, three cards overall. And uh, if Druid is able to deal with this, it, he, he should be in a good spot. He just overvalued the priest. Well, it, it's just a bad matchup for the priest, so yeah. at some point, Druid will win. That's for sure. Well, the thing is, uh, as long as priest has the board, it's really hard to overvalue with that hero power been upgraded so it's pretty hard for the value of four four health per turn but if priest doesn't doesn't have the board then it's another different story it's just it's all right it's a, a good body not really helpful here not yet I, he will need a spell um, to be able to draw some cards but I'll just play the pyromancer here you need the body on the board okay You need the body on the board because that's the only way you can battle against the druid. You need damage output on the board to gain advantage from the uh, excavated evil. You might draw next turn because that then it's six or seven damage from the pyromancers so who can trade with bigger minions. And you just saw a keeper, so there might and a wrath and a swipe. I think double wrath even. So there's uh, not a lot of options to to clear that um, that pyromancer easily. Okay. Um, for this turn, I think Keeper killing the free 2 and Druid of the Claw, because in a taunt form? Yes, I would, like, right now Druid has the upper hand, yeah. Priest doesn't have many cards, but you should you should not overextend... Uh, to Light Bomb. Yes, to Light Bomb. So, Druid should play, like, really safe, but uh, not too safe, l letting, uh, giving Priest more cards. Yeah. So I think this is a really good play. Yeah, Torstan actually, because you, you traded with Lothab, so you're, you're good there. Okay. Um, well, you need needs cards. Entomb is a card. <laughs> it's a good card, actually. Getting Torstan out of the board. Not bad. How many cards are left? Like five? Well, wait, eleven. Uh, Anit has eleven, but I didn't see Tyson. Okay, they didn't okay. draw that much this game, actually. Okay, I'm just like you know, you don't see the edge of the deck. <laughs> yeah, right, so yeah. I'm I'm just looking at it. Uh, it's like two cards left. Four. Uh, actually, five. Eleven for uh, the priest. How many cards for the druid? Five. Okay. Oh. Okay, so priest can still actually win this um, if he clears the board somehow, but to do it, needs you need needs to excavate evil this to just clear that. Well, actually, no, that will be a bad draw. Excavate evil right now. Some with something. Yeah, he needs to draw more even. That's oh. not bad. Yeah, Sylvanas, Sylvanas would be insane here. No. Death Beast! Okay, this is board. I, I was thinking about an explosive sheep because with excavated evil. Yeah, me too. That sounds like a great card. Yeah. So you basically get the sheep and you keep it in your hand. Oh, excavated evil! No, no, you just drop it immediately because your opponent doesn't have a way to c to heal his own minions, so you don't care about it. Hmm. Interesting. Is he going to use the excavated evil here? This is a such a cool thing with ex excavated evil. Your opponent just lost a draw. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's like, true. it doesn't really do anything, and he can't play it because he kills his own minions, so his own win condition. And if you give it back to your opponent, because you're in a bad spot... Then it becomes good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, I don't really want this card. Please take it. Yeah, but don't take it away. But don't but play you it yourself. It yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is probably the best use of Excavated Evil that I've seen in competitive play so far. Because 
probably that's the, like the second time you see it. <laughs> probably, yeah. Oh, imagine an excavated evil draw right now. That would be so insane. Wait, wait, why are you, why are you not hitting yourself if there will be a savage draw? That's 8 damage, 12, 16, 18. And, okay, that's close. I mean, with if that would be the combo, it would have been dead anyway, right? Yeah, 14, but 14, 18, 20, 26. Exactly, exactly 30. Okay, so that was a good heal. Good thing to heal the uh, Dark Cult. So what's your game plan here? Do you try to raise the priest because he doesn't have cards or you try to, you still try to outvalue him with good trades? I don't think you can outvalue at this point. So you just go face and, and hope? It Maybe you just sacrifice the Keeper, you play Force of Nature, kill the 5-8 with the Keeper and Force of Nature and deal 8 damage to the face. I yes. agree with that. But the thing is you will do only 4 damage uh, face per turn because Priest has upgraded hero power. So oh, yeah, right. is it enough? to That's close the point. game. The problem is like if uh, if you don't trade this um, this dude is just going to kill your yeah. creatures and you will deal even less damage over time. So I think that's the correct play there. Excavated evil light, light bomb. bomb should be good. Emperor. Emperor. Well, it's a 5-5 five 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 minion, body. so it's not bad. Yeah, especially because that excavated evil is a dead card for now. All right, Dru Druid running out of cards. Two cards only for Druid. Savage Roar. Six damage. If we would have just ignored the 5-8, he would have won right now. Defensive play wasn't the best play last time. Are, are you sure? Yeah, he probably would. Yeah, because you deal additional two damage to the And to you the have phase. Force of Nature overall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, I think Druid has another Savage Roar in hand. You know, in deck. Uh, didn't he use double, it double for sure. the combo with the death lords? Yeah, you're right, you're right. So he doesn't have... Force. He has force. One more force? Or he used only force? No, no, no. He used the full combo. Oh, okay. He used oh, the yeah, yeah. Combo. You're right, you're right. So this is the last savager he has. The last savager and there are no more force of nature. So I think... What is left? Uh, one one innervate? Floor, maybe? Uh, I think he used both. And you had to use both to get so low on cards, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. Almost well, out we'll of cards. Is swipe, that maybe? Yes, there's an uh, under the swipe. Ooh, Azure Drake into swipe. Yeah, that's good. Light bomb now. He needs a light bomb. If he gets a light bomb, he will be able to. I think you should. He wins the game. I think. Um, but in this situation, that's 11 damage to the face. How is Savage your hero power? And kill the um, zombie Chow, and I think you have little next turn. Okay. I'm not sure. Or you want to Savage your to... What about just swipe hero power? Yeah, I think swipe hero, uh, I think swipe hero power was better. Uh, sorry, um, swipe and just go face. Okay. So turn. You, you, you can swipe you face and hero power the zombie Chow, because you have spell power. That will but be you it. didn't have enough mana. Oh, okay. That would be it anyway, so it doesn't matter what you did. But this game was closer than expected with five cards. If you would get the second light bomb, you would just win right here. Yeah. would not be enough damage. Unit was very close to win this matchup, although he was so unfavored in the beginning. Wait, what? What is he doing? I don't know. I mean, it's lethal anyway. So yeah. Just, just the narrows are getting into him. This Gives him a card! Yeah. This would be a relief for Tessin. That oh. was Curator. <laughs> that was Light Bomb. Yes, Tessin is back in his seat and, uh, well, he didn't go anywhere actually. He's still there. But uh, That was a really weird there. game because it should have been Over. done at like turn 5. Yeah. Yeah. But um, this is another example of, of what we were saying yesterday. A lot of players are still are inexperienced when it comes to, um, you know, broadcast events. And you are starting to be very defensive in most of those situations. When you're nervous, you're playing to save. And then you're being punished by situations like that, an example. By the Doomsayer, because you're trading too much. Because you're, you're just trying to be the player that has the board control. You play the arena game. And most likely your opponent can take advantage of your mistakes and outplay you. And that almost happened. If you need with top deck a single light bomb or an excavated evil, the game would have been done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, he was really close. And he has a, a couple of outs right there. Uh, even something like... In Tomb. Would, um, there was I, I think he had tomb. two in Tombs already. What about Sludge Belcher? Would Sludge Belcher stop this? Like, there was Swipe and Sludge in the hand. It w yeah, it will stall another turn. Yeah. 
Yeah, so many ways, but uh, he didn't get it. And uh, we believe it was a good matchup for Tessin to begin with. Um, Tessin didn't believe that. So he should be happy about winning that unfavored matchup in his eyes. And right now, Unit still has a Warlock and Warrior. We don't know exactly what he's playing. He might I'm be playing I'm thinking control. about it, the explosive ship here. Yeah, but I, mean, I think it was better. But w it probably wouldn't help because he didn't draw a single Holy Nova um, from the last s seven cards. Like the, the Holy Nova would be awesome. Would have been awesome. Um, the Excavated Evil would have been awesome. The Light One would have been awesome. But even without the ship, all those cards would probably would have won him the game. Yeah. Even the Holy Nova, if it would have been uh, able to deal with the Bikram Hunter before he was trading with a minion from the priest. That's a true. very interesting match. We did focus a lot on testing during those matches, but I have to say that the unit is play playing really well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, the the priest that he brought here was really interesting. Won him two games. He was playing it, I would say, almost flawlessly. Maybe some options could have been different, but in general, he was playing very well. Yeah, and he it, you can see he has experience playing in those land tournaments because he doesn't show nerves. He's really calm. Uh, just looking at testing from time to time and playing his game. I can already see that uh, Anid is a player that r like prepares really good for a uh, tournament. My god, what? <laughs> so you ha we have Fibonacci Warrior? Fibonacci Warrior, apparently. But why would you pick that into the Druid? Does it have a good matchup against Druid? I would say it's uh, practically the same as the Contra Warrior, right? Actually, if you have Maybe Bash. his other deck is Renolok and he prefers... Like but Rhinolog is not that bad against Druid. It's, it's, no, no, un it's, it's unfavored. Yeah, it's unfavored. But is it more unfavored than than Warrior? Well, this mm. kind of Warrior... Like, what is uh, specific for Fibonacci Warrior? He plays Tournament Medic, he plays Deathwing. It shouldn't be as that good, but... Maybe he has... Uh, like, maybe he's really confident in the... In, in the his, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because the thing is, you will... If you lose the fire, you will still have... Uh, Warlock left. So yeah, exactly, exactly. So it probably doesn't matter that much. I think the card that we should look at is Bash. Like, mm. I think the Slam Bash Warrior overall has a better matchup versus Druid yeah. than uh, the standard Control Warrior. Yes. It's. I think you're still unfavored a bit, but it's closer to 50-50 now. If there is a, st a version that gives you more chances against Druid, that's the one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But th this this will be really cool to see here at Tower and Tales PGL Spring Season. There's a wild growth for Tessin, but this Shade of Dextramas is, is really tempting as well. Especially because you don't have a turn 4 play. The Banzo would have gone for the wild growth. Azure Drake building up the advantage, getting the another card for the Emperor, and then having discounted Shade of Dextramas after the brawl. Seems like a very good option. Just it, it, Shade of Dextramas is one of the, 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 the minions that can survive, that can build you up the board after after a cleanup, right? They can be attacked yeah. with the weapon. Yes. So I think you play Wild Growth, right? He, he tries to bluff. <laughs> it's like, oh, Probably do I play work. my <laughs> Shredder or do I play my <laughs> Wild Growth? <laughs> do I play my Innervate? Desi still doesn't know what he's facing specifically, but after seeing Bash, he, he suspects. Yeah, he probably him. assumes that it's on the water. And for sure, he's relieved he, it's not Patron. Yeah. Hmm. Still, uh, looking at Unit's hand, Lothar, do you like it? There's uh, the Death Spite, Sylvanas, Brawl, it seems pretty. Okay. Well, Sylvanas is convincing against Druid. Most of the time, there's no Keeper. You can just swing the board around and suddenly. You're in a position to win. Solely because you had some fans. So I like that a lot. I think this matchup game plan for Warrior is just remove all all three threats and then win with Justicar Hero Power. Yeah. And get out of uh, get out of reach of the combo. Exactly. And as a druid, there are two possible um, like two possible uh, gameplays. You either use combo and focus combo try to killing your opponent, try killing your opponent, or you use combo to remove the board and try to kill uh, him with, uh, with your minions. minions. Yeah. So you sh uh, he should de he should uh, decide what strategy he wants to apply. Well, first he needs to decide what to do with uh, what to do with Sylvanas um, because he didn't get Keeper of the Grove. If you want to win this game, you have to play Belcher and go face, but it will be heavily punished by the brawl. But there's only usually only one brawl. Right. Yes. But you can sacrifice two minions for Sylvanas and 
lose 9 damage to the face. And Belcher is also like dying to the weapon attack. So this is a perfect situation for Unid. He stood uh, 25, which is not threatening at all, and he can play Justicar, which is not even contested. This is a perfect scenario for the warrior. It's yes. like, yeah. yeah, I just avoided a huge swing to my face. I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah. My armor is almost intact. It's I've just dirty. I've dealt with Shade, with Azurjag, easy. And 22 is a really good spot as well. Rust, Rust I mean, is a really good top deck. If yeah. you would deal like the face damage, that would probably be the ba bad play, because we know there's a brawl. Yeah. But from the player's perspective, when you uh, have to see and think mm. clearly how do you want to win the game, you're just like, yeah, I need to deal the damage. I need to build up the board and hope that your opponent doesn't have a way um, to, to just clean clean it up, right? And then you stack up the damage, you ignore the fact that Savannah's on the board, you get a Savage Roar without Force of Nature, just push it. Like, honestly, Lothar, the more I think about it, it's not even the brawl. Um, if you play Belcher into that situ into that board, if he attacks with the Death Spite into Belcher, he can just slam the 1-2, or like bash the 1-2, and then Savannah stacks into Azurjake, and you lose the Shade, which is uh, a 5-5. Five -five. But you're still dealing damage to the face. Yeah, 9 damage. 9 damage is a huge chunk of health. It was a tough call there, definitely. And now you're, you're out of resources, look at that. Yes. You're aware that how does... Even if you don't know that this is like tournament medic wacky stuff... And you're still you're in a <laughs> You still know that drink. that's a warrior and yeah. What, yeah. what does the warrior do? Well, build up the armor and finish off your creatures with a one mana spell, right? Especially after As True Heart. Yeah, with the tank up it's so easy. So, when you're out of Ancient of Laws, I think that was the factor, right? If you know that you have Ancient of Law, then you might have been trading with Sylvanas, but when you don't have Ancient of yes. Law and you can't replace the, the cards that you're losing it to it, then the damage output is way more important. True. And now Uni takes initiative, suddenly, with Harrison Jones being the pressure card, goes, goes up to 23, so it looks really bad for Tessin. Even well, Dr. Boom is something. That is a big game hunter. So, sure. I mean, you probably have to play it anyway. You don't have anything else in your hand and you would like to get Force of Nature for the Emperor to play, right? Yes, yeah. he probably wants to get some good value for the Emperor. Because it dies with the weapon as well, so not developing anything is not gonna work here. Yeah, the thing is, if you don't develop, if you, if you don't develop anything, your hero power is strictly worse than him. Yeah, it's like actually um, denying the, the work you did before. Uh, Tessin yeah. is actually nodding his head, so he knows what version of the deck this is. He recognizes it. But now all the work he did in the early turns that just doesn't matter. Yeah. I will just lost the advantage, lost the pressure you had because of the wild growth and innervates. And you're getting outvalued by a tournament medic. This is the first time I, I, I say that. It's probably probably last, but uh not necessarily. I think <laughs> after rotation we'll see a lot of tournament medic in control decks. Hopefully. I, I would love to see some in inspired decks, you know? I mean I was playing it on on my stream because they're fun. But they're not effective <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. Against the meta game. Well, this this deck actually is, is quite effective overall, but uh, far from being a, a full inspired deck, I would like to see those as well. Okay. Shade is not doing much. There is no pressure for Unit at the moment, but he doesn't wow. even need pressure. Yeah, exactly. As long as uh, there is no pressure, we can hero power, and if. Uh, Druid is over committing, you have double bro double brawl in hand. Mm -hmm. so. That's a very good draw. That's a decent draw. You can still cycle and combo get is really good. Yeah. So F finally with Torison. If he gets a second Savage Roar, he will be open to a really nice combo overall. Big game hunter. So now let's see the warrior's side. He will use one of the shield slams. Or has I mean he will hesitate <laughs> to use the brawl unless there will be a point when he dies to the combo with the shade. Yeah. Right? But he will be armoring up every single turn. So. Well, he had an opportunity to kill the shade last turn. He could have just attacked. Alright, going for the brawl. The revenge? Yeah, and the weapon Ooh. attack. Unlucky. What do you think if the druid just waits until he gets emperor value on double force, double savage or and on innervate to deal double, like. 
Yeah, I, don't I, know. Know. Yeah. I know what you what you're it saying. It might still not be enough. Like let's say like double combo is twenty two. Let's say shade will be at eight eight. So no, but you four turns. You play double force. Oh, double force, double, double, force, double savage. Double. Or yes, I'm not sure how much damage is that, but. Well, that's uh, 12 minions. Let's say there is seven minions on board. So basically, double double uh, savage roar gets you. Seven. How do you want to play f double force of nature and double savage roar? You you get emperor value and mm -hmm. you have one innervate. I think. Didn't he use two already? One was used for the palte shredder and. He used two. I'm not sure. Might have been us using one, but uh, like the the card draw from the druid is not low. So getting that combo is. The chance of getting the combo might not be that high. Oh wow, he's attacking with the shade. That's like his ticket to yes, win. Yes, yes. Uh, that yeah, that wasn't good. Well, I guess if he he played low tap, so he thinks he's safe. But but that doesn't matter for the shield slam, which is for six mana, and it's a good deal. Six mana deal five damage yeah. to a minion or six or X is just a, an okay deal when you think about it. It's just a hard removal. Yeah, we just keep the shade. Just grow from turn to turn until yeah. it reaches like I don't know. I think Tessin reached the point where he's playing by default. He doesn't really have a plan for this game specifically. He doesn't he, really yeah. know how to win this. He's strong minions and hoping. Um, to need something. Stick? Yeah, and it doesn't have um, an answer. Yeah, exactly. But it isn't working so far for him. Still more than 30 health for you need. And uh, this, you need is. Presenting exactly what we discussed in the very, big, in the very beginning, the, the heavy control approach. He brought the, the most control, the, the biggest control decks there are, right? Like especially if that's the Reno Lock, the being the last one. French stuff. What can you do? It's good. But <laughs> I love how people were like um, on Reddit and Twitch chat are, are bashing on aggro decks, and they want to see control decks yeah. in tournaments. But then th when they see a control meta in tournaments, it's like, oh my god, bring back face shamans and <laughs> face hunters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so boring, right? Yeah. Well, this matchup is mostly... Um, it's really hard to say what can Druid do. Like, from our perspective... Combo out. I guess, yeah, right? That's the only way to win. Wha there's additional damage with the zero mana living roots. Yeah, sure. So we let's just double let's four, double savage roar. <laughs> Living roots. <laughs> Let's count the damage then. Like double, double uh, force of nature into savage roar is six. We counted with empty six board, right? Six yeah. minions. So six savage minions. roar is fourteen damage each. So twenty-eight damage with double sa savage roar, and then you have um, 26. 20, 20, 20, tw 12 from the tw trians. So that's forty damage from two force of nature. Wait, one savage roar. Double force, one savage roar. So du double force is 12. Moody was talking about no. two savage two Double force, double savage roar. Okay. Yeah. Will he be able to do it though? Because this is 12, uh, 12 mana. Now that he doesn't have the second force of nature, uh, yeah. so the second savage roar in hand, it's not possible. Yeah, not so possible. like, let's let's talk about this. How much damage this is? This is 12 plus 7, 14, 26, 28 with the living roots. And if he has another one minion, that's uh, 30 plus the minion attack. Yeah, I will believe that uh, you're right. It's too too hard to <laughs> math is too <laughs> math is too hard. Okay, um, Moody. Well, I have to ask you. Like, how are you feeling about this match overall? Who would you like to face, uh, Unit or Tessin? Because you're you're facing the winner of this. Well, I'm probably gonna face Tessin. I would like to know. So I would probably face Anit. Uh, from based on these games, I I would like to face Tessin. <laughs> okay. But uh, I think I will have some problems because Anit seems the player that he he really know what uh, know what he's doing, and he will probably scout my decks. But the good thing is I don't know what I want to bring yet. So if I don't know, he can't. Uh, he can't counter. Yeah, he can't counter me. Unit was I think top eight uh, Dreamhack Summer as well last year. Was he? Yeah. That was a French player, but I don't think that was Unit. Yeah, I think that was Unit, and he uh, actually lost in the first uh, the first match, but he made it so bad. Dreamhack Summer. I don't know who defeated him. Oh, look at that! Played. Innovate. So now he actually can double double Force of Nature Savage Roar. So that's 12, 30, 13. 31. Yep. Should be 31, which is a lot, but still good enough. Still not enough. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wait, but can he win next 
And well, if there is more damage than the trends, but then like actually the, the small no, trend is no way. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. So you're sitting at how much damage is this? 28, right? Without anything. So 28 damage. But there is 43 at the moment. Even more. 47. And almost out of cards. You just fatigued the druid. Unity is like, come at me, bro. Yeah. I still have a lot of armor to spend. Azor Drake, not the best minion you want to see right now. <laughs> Especially with fatigue coming. Well, he, c he wants to see any kind of minions, yeah. so... Yeah. Uh, even Angry Chicken. Have you actually noticed that your opponent in the show yeah, match had an Angry yeah, Chicken? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> what? In the Secret Paladin? But I burned it, so it didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> did. <laughs> but uh, Tessin in a really bind. Uh, in a bind. It's a really tough situation. We're back to the wall. You're facing this um, 24 armor wall. How do you go through it? Even though you have so much damage, you don't have enough. Second Savager, but not enough mana to cast everything. Welp, this sucks. So he wants to use force right now and then double combo, or no? Um, maybe just co one well, combo, combo now, a second exactly combo. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not enough, right? Yeah, just showing. Hey, I, I I have cards. After the full combo with one more creature than usual, the warrior is still at 30. Yeah, full health. And you haven't s we haven't seen Deathwing yet. Where's the Deathwing? Come on, you need draw cards. Show Deathwing. Why not draw first? No! no, he's not even drawing because this is like a fatigue match. All right, <laughs> Tessin gives up. We haven't seen Deathwing, but we have seen Tournament Medic. And you need is the winner. He takes this. 3-2. 3-1. To be honest, it should have been 3-0. Seeing how, how the draws were panning out against the, the priest against the druid. Like I would love to see 3-0 with that priest. And he was really close to it. Like yeah. he just needed one top deck, the one light bomb, the one excavated evil, the one holy nova, and he would have won this game against Unfa being unfavored against the druid. So yeah, fortunately, well. we don't have that story. But well, he's coming for an interview. Yep. So you need to join us here, just here. a moment. Hello, man. Uh, first, congratulations for winning. Thank you. And uh, you played priest. Oh, you almost free out with priest. Yeah, almost. So, what was the reasoning? Like you, you did in the interview. You said you throw away mage. You don't want to play mage anymore. Is priest. The, the best class you could get for this uh, opponent? Uh, actually, I played against the scene in the... Um, in the Swiss? In the Swiss, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew his lineup. I knew he, he played uh, Zoo, Paladin, uh, Secret, and Grim Patron. So I thought uh, Priest is favorable against all of these classes. That's mm -hmm. why. Nice. Okay. And uh, Excavated Evil did really yeah. good, good That's job. That's amazing. That. Yeah. Against the three uh, special decks, yeah. Yeah. these three decks in particular, it's amazing. We were really surprised that your opponent didn't pick Druid against your Priest. Me too, this. yeah, me too. Okay. I, was just I, I don't get uh, why he didn't pick Priest immediately. Um, druid, yeah, druid, yeah. yeah. Yep. All right, um, so was there anything in those matches that uh, surprised you overall, or were you just playing your A game? Um, I don't have many games with the Priest deck, because I just... Uh, Constructed it uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I played some games on ladder with it, and it was okay. But you know, on ladder you play against Rogue, Maligos, against yeah, uh, anything. So I was kind of hoping it would work out. Uh, it can get very bad draws sometimes, and I got really lucky three games. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, you also want to ask. This is your moment. You're the the victory. You advance to tomorrow. But in the interview, you've mentioned that Vince is one of the might might be one of the best players here. Yeah. So, um, who is Vince? Uh, he's a new kind of young player from the French uh, uh, community. He's playing for Meti Esports, and he, I, I actually uh, yesterday I played next to him, and I saw his games uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, waiting for my opponent to rope or something, and uh, <laughs> he was really Im impressive. He thrilled with uh, Reno OTK uh, Warlock. Okay. Nice. Nice to get some more players into our community, tournament community, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, you played extremely well, and uh, also the tournament medic and warrior was uh, a lot of fun. So is it Fibonacci list? Well, you don't have to tell us exactly, but... Uh, actually, uh, when I create deck list, I go from stream to stream, and yesterday was an odd form stream, and he played one, 
Um, f uh, originally, this list is from VLPS, okay. uh, the American streamer, but uh, I kind of tweaked it around to be good against uh, testing li lineup. Can you tell us if there was Deathwing inside? No, 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 no okay. Deathwing. The, okay. the higher scale is Gromash, but I, ha I don't have any B uh, target for BGH besides uh, Gromash. Okay. okay. So I have one, uh, one question. How do you feel about your tomorrow match? You play versus Modi. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be okay. I can I get to change my decks and I can play a lot of decks uh, at the moment. So Whoa. maybe no priest, uh, I, s I will see. But uh, I'm confident. Let the mind games All right, so start. Modi, uh, you need this confident. Are, are you confident as well? Of course. Uh, I yeah. I yeah, I am. We right. will see. Okay, guys, uh, you did really well today. You advanced to the second day. So uh, you doubled the money. You are getting some HCT points for the Hearthstone Championship Tour, but there is still much more to get. So um, I just have to uh, wish you good luck tomorrow with both of you. And uh, thank you so much, Moody, for joining us well, on the thank casting you for couch. Having me. And uh, that will be it for this round. We still have much more Hearthstone to come in the upcoming rounds because today we're deciding the whole top eight. So stay with us. But now we're going into a short break to prepare the next match. See you guys in a moment.